Okay, welcome everyone to the, uh, the uh, program specific info session for the University of St. Andrews, our fabulous program in Scotland. It's the only program that we have in Scotland and, uh, and it's a really great program. So um, I'm, I'm really happy to uh, be uh, here chatting with you all tonight. I'm, I'm Chris Van Boven. I'm one of the assistant directors in the study abroad office. And you all are very fortunate tonight to be uh, also uh, in the company of two excellent returnees from the program from this past year. Um, so I'll give them a chance to introduce themselves. You just give your, your full name and, uh, and your majors. That would be great. Um, so uh, we'll start uh, with, uh, with Grace. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Grace. Obviously, I'm a senior and was at St. Andrews for last year. I'm a psychology major with a minor in creative writing. And Lucy. Hi, I'm Lucy. I'm also a senior that was abroad last year at St. Andrews. I'm an accounting major and a philosophy minor. So I love uh, using Lucy as, a, as an example for folks who, who you know, like to, uh, you know, uh, propagate the myth that, that folks in so-called restrictive majors can't, can't study abroad, you know, period, and certainly not for the academic year as uh, but Lucy is a perfect example of where if you, you know, uh, you plan uh, effectively, you could totally make it happen. So um, uh, awesome, awesome. Um, so they're going to be chiming in uh, throughout. Um, and we'll go ahead and get started with the most basics. So uh, you're going to be going to, uh, as I said, Scotland, you're going to be in the town of St. Andrews, which uh, uh, is on the, the eastern coast of, of Scotland. Uh, it's about an hour and 15, 20 minutes out of Edinburgh. Um, and it is, uh, one of the most picturesque places you could, you could go. It's, um, absolutely beautiful. Um, uh, of the, one of the things that, that sets it apart, I think from many of our, our, uh, particularly our university program locations is the setting it, it, that it's in a, um, uh, a, a really, a, you know, a, a small city, uh, by comparison to a lot of the other, you know, the cities in, you know, most of the programs and the university programs in, in Ireland, for example, you know, are in the 200 to 300,000 with the exception of Dublin and the same holds for, um, for the, the, the programs in England. Um, certainly the program in Melbourne, Australia is, you know, four and a half million people. So this is a, a probably the, the most um, sort of the smallest in terms of population size. Um, and, uh, and it was in terms of a little bit of the history it was founded by, uh, by folks who came from Northern Europe between 10,000 and 5,000 BC. And uh, its namesake is a, a monastery that was established in the eighth century that was associated with the relics of, of St. Andrew. Um, it is world famous for golf. It's known as the birthplace of, of golf as we know it. Um, and it has a, an incredible cathedral um, that's in ruins. You see a picture of it there that's the largest of its kind in Scotland. And, and perhaps the biggest draw for St. Andrews is the university. Um, it is, uh, uh, again, a, a, an absolute destination. It's a very sort of internationally renowned um, institution. Um, they have phenomenal departments, um, really uh, just, again, an excellent place. Um, and so uh, just a couple of quick pictures here. Some more of the town. And so what I want to do briefly is show you all um, St. Andrews uh, has some really nice brief videos that kind of give you a quick flavor of what life is like. And so I'm going to show you those quickly now. We live in a beautiful, we live in a beautiful part of the world. Scotland's a glorious place to study and I'm always urging my students to take time and make the most of what Scotland has to offer. It's things around you are nice and it's beautiful. You actually feel like, you know, getting up in the morning and going out, make something out of your day. It's a small town with, with big town uh, amenities. So there's nice restaurants, nice grocery store. You have, you know, the old Scottish buildings and you have the North Sea just rolling in and the green hills behind. It's just lovely to walk along those old streets and the people are so nice. So it's, it's a great place to live. This year being the 600th anniversary, they, we've had so many celebrations and you can really feel how old this town is and all the different traditions, the way we wear our gowns. It's really nice to be a part of. It's something you never have anywhere else. It's special. But at the same time, we can sit in these wonderful facilities. Awesome. And then we'll do just one other quick one. The halls are amazing. I'm in Macintosh Hall. 
and I love it. It's amazing. I mean, I could not have asked for a better room than this. I could not have asked for a better roommate or a better community to be living in. I've just been so happy being here. Um, my parents have noticed this. My friends in other universities have been so jealous when they, when they go onto my Facebook and see the things that I've been up to. I love it. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. The department's not too big, so you can get to know everyone really easily. And um, St Andrews itself is lovely. I mean, you never have to go further than like half an hour's walk and everyone's really friendly and you just get involved with everything. And it's so easy to get involved in those different things. So as you can see, it really, really charming uh, 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 town. Um, you know, I, I, I like the, the way that it was framed as sort of a, a small town with big town or you know, amenities. So you've got everything that you, you know, you could possibly, you know, need in the way of, you know, different restaurants. And, and as we'll see, we'll see some the terrific pictures that, uh, that Lucy had, had put together for us to give you a, a flavor for, for what that looks like um, from the perspective of a Holy Cross student. But again, just in terms of the context, it's just an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous location to, uh, to be. Um, the university is, is phenomenal. So um, uh, one of the things that I, I usually say about St. Andrews right off the bat is that I find that, you know, all of our programs provide a, a different experience from when you get at Holy Cross. But if you are someone who, you know, is looking for, for a place that, that is similar to Holy Cross in the sense of, of kind of um, having a strong sense of community where there's a, you know, a sort of a, a vibrant campus life um, and where there are lots of sort of traditions, to, again, to sort of, uh, you know, uh, come together as a, um, as an institution uh, and as a, you know, sort of a student population. St. Andrews is absolutely uh, an excellent choice. Um, it's this the smallest in terms of overall population um, uh, of the, the university programs we have. I mean, at, at 8,000 undergraduates, you compare that to some of the other programs that end up, you know, like Melbourne is another program that I advise on, for example, where, you know, you've got like 30,000 undergraduates. So it's um, in terms of population size, it's definitely, you know, though still, you know, the two and a half times or however larger than Holy Cross, it's, it's the, the most intimate of the settings that we have in that sense. So for folks coming from a Holy Cross setting, they often find that to be a, you know, a, a, a more sort of uh, straightforward transition. Um, it is uh, the first university in Scotland. So I, I just, I love seeing the, these, these dates of the university were founded because there's such an incredible history there. Um, uh, many, many uh, hundreds of years old. Um, and uh, it's the third oldest university in the English uh, speaking world, which is great. Um, and as you can see, you know, it's, uh, you know, a lot of folks have passed through the halls of St. Andrews. Um, I'm not going to go into the names here, but there's some exciting ones here. I threw in Jonathan Taylor Thomas, which I think is a little bit uh, more of my, my generation. But, uh, but again, some, some definitely some, uh, some great uh, folks have passed through there. So I think what I'm going to do now is before we get into um, more details about kind of the specifics of the way the academic program works at St. Andrews and eligibility and so forth. Um, I want to uh, turn the floor over to, to Grace and to Lucy, and we're going to do that uh, by way of a, um, a slideshow that, uh, that Lucy has put together of her experience. And we're just kind of going to have a little bit of an open conversation about um, experiences around, you know, what the, their impression of the, the, the city was like, um, you know, the town, the, uh, and then certainly the, um, the, the university experience. And so with that, I'm going to switch presentations here. Okay, okay great. So um, I'd say this first uh, map, did you put this together by the way, Lucy, or is this something that was publicly available? I just took a screenshot because I was trying to look for a map that had like the stuff that was actually important. But I took a screenshot from Google and then put in little like oh, cool. word bubble captions. That's great. That's great. Um, so, um, so yeah, why don't we start with just kind of an, an overview, uh, Grace and Lucy, about like your impression of, uh, of St. Andrews as just a, like a, a place to live uh, as a student. Uh, and then we'll, yeah, I mean, we can use this map as kind of a little bit of an, a way to orient ourselves as well. Um, well, so I tried to do like the main housing places that I had friends and new people in, which are the yellow ones. 
And I lived in DRA, which was the farthest away. And I think Grace, you lived in DRA too, right? Yeah. Um, so like, it looks kind of far away on this map, but that's about a mile and a half, a little bit less, maybe closer to a mile walk into town to like the dark blue union, um, which seems like a lot compared to Holy Cross, but it was so walkable and really, really nice. And you can kind of see there's like such a wide variety of things around the town and everything's within a mile, a mile and a half of each other. Um. I don't know if you have anything to add, Grace. Um, yeah, like Lucy said, I was in DRA too. I think that when I first arrived in St. Andrews, that walk did feel like a lot to me, um, but especially even towards the end of second semester, even after being there for a few weeks, you realize that you really are so close to everything. And even the walk into town, it may be a mile, but it's a really pretty walk. It's not like you're like walking like in downtown Worcester. It's like you're in just like um, a really pretty area getting to where you have to go. Also, a lot of people do get bikes, which you're able to rent um, in the town for either the semester or the year. So that also makes uh, the walk very bearable. That was gonna be one of my questions. If you all went with the, in, in the bike route, I know a lot of folks end up doing that. I didn't end up getting a bike, but all my friends lived in DRA, so we often like walked to town and from town together. We shared a taxi or took the bus together. Uh, yeah, and I also didn't get a bike, but I always say it because it's something where if I were to repeat the experience, I would probably get a bike. Right, get a bike, nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and uh, so I'd love to hear more too about just your general impression of 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 the of the town of of you know the the context in in Scotland of the coastal sort of you know setting etc. Um, so DRA, which is like the farther area, everything around that there's like the athletic fields, and then it's all residential. So if you walk towards town, you're walking like past academic buildings and fields, and you're just surrounded by students. And then you get into town, where again it's all students. And then there's a lot of retired people in town, um, but everyone's super, super friendly. And then if you go towards like the bottom of the map, towards the other big grocery store in the hospital, it's all residential. So it feels like you're walking through like a suburban neighborhood and it feels so, so safe, especially compared to Worcester where you have like Holy Cross, which is gated and then highways and like busyness. It's really, really calm and just nice. Yeah, it's definitely an extremely safe environment. The town itself consists of just three roads. Each have academic buildings, but also like what Lucy put on the map, like Tesco, which is a grocery store and like a place that mimics CVS and things like that. Um, in addition to all of that, a lot of the classes or at least um, in a few of the buildings that I had classes in, like looking outside of the window, you could always see the water, um, which I think is just really pretty and such a cool element of being at St. Andrews and being so close to that. Me and some of my friends from Holy Cross, uh, or I guess some of my friends from Holy Cross and I, but we, uh, we always kind of made it our goal to walk to the beach every day, which um, was so wonderful, but also so much easier than it even sounds. It wasn't, it wasn't a big feat to get to the beach. It was really just, walking right out of class and turning in the right direction and there was like four beaches in town so yeah. <laughs> you could really end up there so easily awesome. and one of the questions that that I, I like to ask folks too is you know what did did you feel that um that it being a smaller place uh limited the experience for you because i mean just because a lot of times folks that are listening in may be thinking well do i want to go to a bigger city i like the idea of st andrews as an institution you know uh, it, am i going to you know be able to find things to do to like have, you know to have fun and enjoy myself despite it being in a smaller place so what, what would you say to folks that are having the, those kinds of considerations i thought it was the perfect size town it was such a college town that a lot of people from Scotland said that it's like the perfect college town, but they wouldn't want to live there beyond college because it, it could be limiting. Um, but there's grocery stores, there's pubs, there's little museums, there's shops, there's the beach, there's golf, and the bus system is really easy. So if you do get sick of it and you wanted that big city, you could go to Edinburgh, which was less than an hour away. You could go to Glasgow, which was a little over an hour away. And then from Glasgow or Edinburgh, you could go anywhere if you wanted something even more. Yeah, I definitely, I never felt, um, I never felt limited while at St. Andrews. I think um, for me, and I'm not sure if it's relatable, but when I first arrived there, 
compare to Holy Cross and the small campus that we have in Worcester, it did feel like a big, big city to me at first. And I remember laughing actually with some of the actual students of St. Andrews. And I would say like, oh, like I'm actually studying abroad. Like this feels so big to me. And I was like, it's not big. Like <laughs> you're out of your mind. But I think that um, in the beginning, it was, it felt like that big city to me. By the end, it just kind of felt like that comforting environment where I knew where I was, but I never, I never felt limited, no. That's awesome. Um, uh, that was a perfect response. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've mentioned DRA, so this is a good segue into um, some really helpful images that Lucy's put together of her uh, uh, of her uh, apartment, or at least some representative ones. So, um, so yeah, do you want to talk talk us through what, what we're looking at here? Yeah. So it was a bunch of like kind of smaller buildings. Um, they all had your own bedroom and your own bathroom, which was really nice. And then you would share a whole kitchen area, um, like the bottom left and um, like a common space with your other flatmates, which was usually five people total. Um, it was like really spacious. I was really lucky because I became best friends with all my flatmates. Um, so I like we hung out a lot in the flat and did stuff together, which was pretty different from I think some of the other Holy Cross kids. Um, I was on the first floor, so we kind of cheated the system and we used our windows as an extra door. So my grandma came to visit me at one point and she's like climbing in through the window, like all of the- Oh, is that what I'm seeing? <laughs> nice. And she's Love like 80 and she could still do it. Um, and then I also had a picture, they were super strict about like cleaning inspections. Um, <laughs> So like at Holy Cross, you may have like random room checks, but they had like health and safety checks every month, I think, um, where they would check your room and they'd leave like a note where like you had to vacuum where you take out your trash or clean your mirror in circles, not in like stripes. And they were so, so strict. And we failed almost every single one of our inspections for like, we didn't wipe the top of our microwave and we're like, we barely use the microwave. Like one thing must have exploded at the first week or something. But that was my flatmate trying to clean the oven one time after we failed two times in a row and they were going to charge us to send a professional cleaner in. So we had to buy some fancy oven cleaner thing. But it was such a good experience because it was definitely very independent. Like I was on a self-catered plan, so I was cooking for myself and all my flatmates were cooking for themselves too. So like we shared the kitchen, but cooked together, cooked on our own, all of that. And just to... Uh... But I want to give Grace also a chance to, to, to chat about her experience, but this is a good opportunity for me to say that uh, at St. Andrews, you have essentially two categories of, 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 uh, of options for housing. Um, uh, they are self-catered and, and catered. And the way that St. Andrews works as far as the application process is you state your preferences at, at the time of submitting your housing application. Um, they do their best effort and, and historically they have done, a, a, I would say, a really good job of, of placing students with their first choice. Occasionally we'll have one student or two students that, in the, the cohort that doesn't get their first choice. Um, but yes, it's either self-catered or catered. So um, Lucy was in a self-catered, which means exactly as she ex described, um, you're, uh, there's no meal plan. Um, and, uh, and so you're, you're purchasing and groceries and you're cooking for yourself you're getting you know, full kitchen facilities um and so for uh, uh this is a great uh, opportunity to sort of build a dependence get yourself ready to go out in the real world learn how to cook a few things we always recommend for folks that are in self-catered housing situations to make sure you go equipped with like five entrees that you know how to make and uh and so yeah it's it's, it's a really it's a, you know, again a, a great experience of sort of building independence the um for folks who are like listen i i I'm not interested in, in, in cooking. I would much rather, you know, uh, go in the catered direction. Um, in that case, you would have a meal plan where you'd have access to, to dining facilities um, where you would be able to, again, have, have all of your meals uh, prepared for you. Um, and Grace, were you also in a self-catered? Uh... I was in catered. Oh, perfect. Okay. So then, then yeah. the perfect combo. Um, yeah, great. Yeah. Um, so just to quickly mention, being in catered housing is no different. Like where you're located is is independent of what like food like style you're getting so i was also in dra like i said before and had the same exact layout that lucy had only difference is that i had access to the food that they served um it was fine i feel like <laughs> i feel like that's a question you don't have to sugarcoat it. Yeah, I, I like folks to know yeah yeah um it's not the best food 
it definitely is not Kimball at all and something that you kind of have to get used to. My recommendation is to only take the whole foods that are there, like the apples and the bananas in the morning. Um, so that's something I kind of ended up doing. Um, but you know, it's livable. I, I was one of the people who was like, oh, I don't want to cook for myself. And frankly, I ended up being happy with the decision, even though it wasn't my favorite food in the world, because uh, like the kitchen in my flat failed, but it failed for a good reason. I didn't want to be in there very much. Um, so yeah, it was still a great experience. And by the end of it, a lot of my friends that I made who even were self-catered would come and sit with me in the dining hall while I ate because everyone has access to it. It's not like Kimball. So yeah, it was a great experience. And so that's, um, I'm really glad that you mentioned that too. So a couple of things on, on that, that the feedback around the food, uh, or two two bits of feedback that I've gotten. Like the way that you characterize it is is pretty pretty typical. Where folks would be like, I mean, it's it's all right. Yeah, and, it's uh, it's edible. It's it's yeah, exactly. You'll you'll <laughs> you'll survive. Um, uh, and the other thing about it too that folks have reported is that occasionally there can be issues with um with the scheduling where that it'll only be offered during like specific like windows of time. And if you like can't make it for whatever reason to that time, then you like miss that particular meal and have to get it elsewhere. So these are just some considerations to, to, to have. The other thing to note is that um, there is a difference in the way that the, the financial structure works for, for those two options. So if you go with the, the catered option and you get the full meal plan, then um, and we'll, this is a bit of a, a preview to the, to the financial portion later. But if you attended the general info session, you would have heard that the, in terms of the costs for study abroad, it's the same at Holy Cross, as at Holy Cross for the major expenses. So like tuition is the same, housing is the same. But when it comes to food, the, the Holy Cross will charge you based on the amount of food that the program provides you. So if you are on a, a you know, full meal plan, like a catered uh, option at St. Andrews, then Holy Cross will charge you the full board charge, which is around $3,500 per semester. Um, they will charge you that full board charge uh, for the meals. Whereas if you are in the self-catered option, then because the program is not providing you any food, then Holy Cross simply doesn't bill you any board charges for that semester. And the idea is that you use that savings to then pay for groceries. Um, just making sure that if you, um, that, that you should talk to uh, your, you know, to financial aid and make sure that you are continued to, to you continue to be packaged based on um, uh, the full cost of attendance. Like, in other words, as if you were paying for board, because then you use those loans or whatever you're taking out to then uh, pay, for, uh, pay for groceries. Um, so again, just things to bear in mind. Um, what else would y'all like to say about about housing or food or anything along those lines? Um, I was one of the people who didn't get along with any of my flatmates. Um, there were, like Lucy said, there were five of us, including myself. They, all four of them were freshmen. Typically that's what happens, um, is that you'll be living with freshmen, although you can be living with other grades, but um, the four of them were freshmen. They were all from the United States. We just didn't really vibe, but it wasn't that big of a deal, um, especially having your own room and your own bathroom. It wasn't really, it wasn't bad. And obviously everyone, everyone's nice. We just didn't become like close friends or hang out or anything like that. But I yeah. think my flat was definitely like <laughs> a lot different because everyone I knew in DRA wasn't friends with their flatmates. Mm -hmm. um, but I was living with three other first year students. Um, two of them were from Scotland, one of them from Hong Kong and then another study abroad student from Middlebury. So I had like another American that I didn't know, but was in the same boat as me being study abroad and wanting to make the most of every, out of everything. Um, and then the other thing too, that's like not a big thing at all, but laundry isn't in your building. So that was kind of an adjustment at first because it was like a five minute walk outside with your laundry to go to the laundry building. Um, which was no big deal at all, but I used to complain at Holy Cross going down four flights of stairs, and now I'm walking five minutes in the cold and the wind and sometimes the rain with your clothing. It, it can add up to be annoying. <laughs> and, and that's a good opportunity to mention, too, that, uh, that laundry is uh, it's one of the things I, I try to make abundantly clear in, like, like ultra, like, big, like, red font, that, like, uh, we make every effort to make the costs uh, uh, between the, at Holy Cross and, and study abroad the same. Laundry, for whatever reason, is not an allowable uh, expense for reimbursement. For we've, we've asked time and again, uh, you know, executive administration about this. Um, it's it's just one of the things that you're going to have to to budget for. It's like one of the few sort of you know uh, noteworthy out of pocket expenses that that you you can anticipate. Um, so just to to know that uh, for when you think you know a lot of folks will end up getting there and like sending me like an email. I don't want to pay for laundry. And, 
I told you. <laughs> um, uh, so let's see here. Uh, we've got a picture here. Tell us, tell us what I'm looking at here. Um, the picture all the way on the left is just part of that walk from DRA into town. That's walking past all the science buildings. So that's like a small little one way street with like teacher student parking. Um, but it's part of the pretty walk. And then the middle picture is this little castle museum that you walk past every day. And then another picture of just the street. And that's if you walk, there's two different ways you could walk into town. You can go on a back path past the science and the academics, or you could walk down like the main road that a taxi or the bus would go. So that's on the main road. Okay, and I see now we're looking at some little bit of academic content. So what are we looking at here? Um, so there's two libraries, I think, total, maybe another like postgrad library. Um, my favorite was St. Mary's Library, which Grace may have gone to because I think it was specific to like the psych area. Um, but everyone had access to it, which was nice. My roommate that was a psych major was the one that showed me and then I had with him all the time. Um, but that felt kind of like dining. It was small. It was old. Um, they gave out like random goodie bags during finals in the fall that they just left on random seats and I found one and it made my day. Um, and then there's a picture of like the path by like the real library, which is really big and really modern and new. And it was nice, like there was usually space, but it was just like really modern. And I liked the old feeling kind of like dining. Um, and then the econ department, I'm an accounting major, so I took a finance course over there, is just an example of one of the classes that's on the scores, which is the street that's right next to the water. So most of the classrooms in there, like you can see the ocean from class, which was really cool. Grace, did you want to add anything about the, the sort of campus uh, feel, the, the, uh, the academic building spaces where you studied that kind of thing? Uh, yeah, I did study in St. Mary's Library a lot. There also was a computer area in DRA that I utilized. Um, and there are a bunch of others around town. Sitting in the quad is also just like a really nice place to just get a lot of work done. I would also go to the beach and get things done just at little tables. So what a thing to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think that there are so many options and the town itself is so beautiful that there are so many places to sit and to get work done. And no matter where you kind of end up doing that work, um, you kind of create your own um, college campus and like what feels familiar to you um, is very much something entirely in your control. I didn't include any pictures of um, the student union, but that was like another really big thing about St. Andrews. And I think all the Scotland schools is they have this building that's kind of campus but way bigger and it had like a cafe in it it had a bar it had a kind of like nightclub um and then it had like some classroom spaces um and like the bookstore and stuff but the cafe and the bar were open 24 7 so it was kind of funny because like there were lots of tables in the bar so people would be doing their homework there and then it would like get to evening and then people would be ordering drinks and you're still doing your homework and you're like wait <laughs> um but that was another really good place that I was there almost every day doing homework in the cafe or the bar or a booth or something. And, uh, and tell us what we're, uh, we're looking at here. We have some gorgeous images of, of, uh, of around town. Yeah, just more pictures of like the old buildings and the small little streets. Um, they set up these Christmas lights and they leave them up for a long time and they're just really pretty and light up the whole town. Um, uh, there's the beach. It's like almost always low tide, it feels like. It's just one of those beaches that has so much sand that stretches across. Um, rainbows, dark skies, but still sun. <laughs> uh, yeah, people were always walking their dogs on the beach too, which I always just thought was so cute. Um, and also in the bottom right picture that Lucy included is um, like the St. Andrew's Cathedral and um, depending on like the hour, there are set hours you can do it, but you are able to walk to the very top of it. And from there you can see the whole town, um, which is really cool. And I would definitely recommend it. Um, yeah. And it's like over it. So you can see both the water and the town and all the academic buildings and the quads. And it's just really pretty and cool. I'm seeing like a glow on your guys' faces <laughs> looking at some of these pictures. I know. I miss it. 
I was on the phone with one of my friends in St. Andrews right now this morning for a few hours. Oh, really? Talking oh, about how different it is now. Oh, I bet. Um, well, awesome. So then uh, looks like we're getting into some tradition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was one of like the big traditions that we kind of didn't really get to do. Um, May dip happens May 1st and it's usually done with your academic families and it's basically I think you stay up all night but you go in um, to the beach at sunrise and there are certain rules we didn't get to do it because we got sent home before May but there was a thing called practice May dip which I didn't know was a thing but my flatmates were doing it and me and another flatmate we were hanging out with them and it was like 10 o'clock at night and they're like oh yeah we're pulling an all-nighter and we're going swimming at sunrise and me and it was the other study abroad student we're like you guys are crazy we have class tomorrow you're pulling an all-nighter to go swimming at sunrise and they were like yeah yeah and we were just like hanging out having a good time and then it was 4 a.m and then we were like well I guess we're pulling an all-nighter and going swimming at sunrise too and we did and we went and it was absolutely beautiful and that was like when all of us became like really good friends um, and now I'm just so glad that I did it because we didn't get to do a real May dip and it was just such a good bonding experience and it was beautiful. Um, yeah, there's also something um, in the beginning of the year called Raisin, which once you're settled with your academic family, oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> um, once you have your academic family and things like that, one of the activities is going into the water in the very early morning. Um, so I remember waking up early and a few other Holy Cross students were in my immediate family. And then we would have certain like family reunions or family events where we found out that like we were, we became cousins with other Holy Cross students. So it's just kind of funny how everything works out. But um, over Raisin weekend, I did go into the water, which was really fun, freezing, but fun. And then um, when unfortunately um, study abroad kind of became canceled and we all needed to go home by March 20th. Um, my friend Meg and I, who also goes to Holy Cross, I don't know if any of you know her, but um, we decided we were going to go into the water anyway and do our own uh, March dip. So absolutely awesome. freezing, maybe stupid to do due to our like weakening immune systems, but a lot of fun. Um, yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, if it, one of the things that St. Andrews is, is really well known for are these really rich, uh, like, uh, you know, many like long, long standing student traditions like these. And so the, these images are, you know, abound of. So t tell us what we're seeing with all the, 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 um, Foam. Stuff, all of these folks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we kind of both talked about like academic families, and that's one of the big St. Andrews things that is unique to just St. Andrews. And basically, third year students will adopt first year students and abroad students and post grads and just people that are new to the community. And uh, you become part of their immediate family. Like Grace said, you can have cousins from like extended family. And it's all built up to this October weekend called Raisin, where it's kind of like an unofficial weekend of hazing, um, <laughs> where your academic parents, like you may have dinners and like get togethers with your whole family leading up to it. But then this weekend is your academic parents can kind of make like a scavenger hunt list and like have all these tasks for the kids to do um so like you can see like we went to the beach the swimming that grace talked about was another thing that like most families will do um and then that's usually on the sunday and then the next day on monday is this giant foam fight thing where you wear a costume and you go to the quad and everyone has shaving cream and the shaving cream sells out of all the grocery stores like the week before um and everyone just like attacks each other with shaving cream and it sounds like the weirdest thing but everyone laughs and it's so much fun and yeah <laughs> yeah there's also like it's a certain time that this like foam event happens at so there's a huge line that like goes like down the street in town and everyone depending on your family or whatever you've decided to do people are in all different costumes and things like that I remember my family we were all dressed up as unicorns and we had big like like I forget what they're called, like tubes that go in the water with like a big unicorn head on it. But, um, and then it hits like a certain time. I think it was noon, but I'm not sure. Um, and then everyone's staring at their phones. And then the second it hits noon, everyone runs onto the field and is like covered in foam. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of fun. Awesome, awesome. Um, very cool. So have Thanksgiving celebration. 
Yeah, me and my American flatmate, we hosted Thanksgiving and we cooked for, I think there were 16 of us total. Wow, that's um, awesome. So we had all of our Scottish friends and then a few of our Holy Cross friends come over and cooked five chickens and like 10 pies and just a whole bunch of stuff. But it was a lot of fun. And when I was on the phone with my friend this morning, I was telling him that they have to have a Thanksgiving this year, even though all their American <laughs> friends are gone. That's awesome. That's really cool. Um, let's see here. And um, so this is getting into some of the things, some other things you did to kind of get involved. Uh, so yeah, what are we, what are we seeing? Um, there's a huge, huge social aspect at St. Andrews. So I only went to like half of the balls, not even that were offered. Um, the upper left was opening ball, which was in like the first month, um, which was a lot of fun. They're all way overpriced. So don't go to everything. <laughs> um, like I think it was at least 50 bucks for a ticket to any of them. Um, but they were just a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of them were for charity, which was kind of cool. So like it was 50 bucks for the ticket, but the organization running the ball um, donated most of it to like a certain charity. Um, opening ball was in the fall. Sentech was in the fall. Mobile was in the fall. And then the fashion show and DRA ball were both in the spring. Um, and there's a lot of fashion shows, like every single weekend, there's one or two happening for different charities run by different people. And so many people get involved in the fashion shows. So all the students are models. The people that run it are models. There's people that do advertising, that do photography, and it's like really popular. And it's definitely like an American bait trap because most of the actual Scottish people are like, yeah, the fashion shows, like you don't need to go to that. Um, but I went to the fashion show with my American flatmate the week, two weeks before we got sent home. And it was like a hundred dollar ticket, but it was the last like fun thing we had done. So we were very glad we went. I don't know if you went to any of these ones, Grace, or if you um, went to I one. only went to the DRA ball, um, but it was a lot of fun. I liked it. Yeah. And, you know, and some students participate in these things. Some, some folks don't. There are, there are yeah. lots of, of things that, that, uh, that y'all can do to, to get involved that, um, that obviously don't, you know, cost, uh, uh, tons of money. And, um, and did you all get involved with any sort of athletic uh, clubs or anything along those lines? And is that, let's see, is that, I don't know if that's part of your presentation, uh, Lucy. I think it's kind of included in like the next one after this. The next one after this. Okay. Let me see. Or two after <laughs> this one. Yeah. Well, and I'll go back to the other ones after this. Yeah. Just as a, as, as a segue. Um, uh, so yeah, why don't you all talk a little bit about, yeah, your experience. Um, so I took golf lessons all year, which was a lot of fun because it was St. Andrews and I figured if I ever want to learn to golf, that was the time to do it. Um, so I had like an hour lesson every week with, which was a lot of fun. And my goal is to be able to play the old course, like one hole with a friend by the end of it. So that was the day before I went home. I went with my friend Charlie who played every single day um, and took his club and did one hit. And it was a great hit, but it was just one. Um, but it was a lot of fun and it was something to do. And like, it's a good skill to just have. Um, there was beach chuckas. One of my flatmates was on the polo team. So she had polo lessons every week and she'd never played polo, but she'd always like rode horses. Um, so that was a cool thing that's definitely unique to St. Andrews and not really popular around American schools. Um, and then Castle Sands was just one of the beaches, but I had friends that played rugby. Um, another friend was in the running club. There was like a lot of things that you could get involved in. Mm -hmm. um, I swam at St. Andrews. I wasn't on, I mean, in general, when it comes to the sports there, you can very easily um, like be on the varsity team if that's something you're interested in doing. They do not view sports the same way as they do at American um, like colleges or universities. It's really more just for the sake of doing it and having fun and meeting new people. That being said, I still did do the recreational version of swimming. Um, so there were three levels. It was the varsity team, developmental, which was like learning how to swim basically, and then rec. Um, so I did it with one other girl from Holy Cross and it was a lot of fun. All of the sports teams on Wednesday nights have a social. So all of the different um, teams and clubs get together. So it's really just a, like a great way to get involved and to meet people. Um, so yeah, that's what I did. It was a lot of fun. 
we always recommend that that if you have even the slightest athletic inclination, like you played, you know, I don't know, as a kid or something, it, it really consider going out for uh, one of the sports, just because well, a couple of reasons. So one, um, exactly to Grace's point, it is not like a Division One like hyper intense like you know uh, American like uh, take on on sports. It's absolutely you know. Uh, in the majority of cases, it's about, you know, having fun and, 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 and you know, having an excuse to go and, you know, on, on Wednesdays, exactly. And like that, you know, have this social experience. It's an awesome way to meet people to kind of, you know, in an enge- like extended way to kind of build relationships over the course of your time there. And one of the things that Holy Cross does as well is that um, over the course of the academic year, um, we give you for, uh, uh, we give you an activity fee reimbursement sort of budget of, uh, of $200 where um, like, let's say you wanted to join, uh, you know, a swim or if you wanted to join rugby and there were startup costs or, you know, equipment needs or things along those lines that you, you needed to be able to participate in those. We don't want, you know, finances to, to sort of prevent students from getting as engaged as possible. And so that's a great way to take advantage, sign up for, you know, as much as you can and, you know, use all 200 of that, of that budget. Um, which by the way, Lucy and Grace, if you happen to have any stray receipts, uh, uh, <laughs> send them, send them my way. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend that you, you get involved as, as, as early on as possible. St. Andrews is the kind of place where, and I think it's just a good place to, to, to bring it up where, you know, student, you can have very different experiences of it. Like on, on the one hand, you know, it, uh, it can be, and I think in the case of, of Lucy and Grace, it was a really rewarding, rich, lively kind of social experience. Um, but a lot of that is a reflection of, of like making sure that you are putting yourself out there and getting yourself as involved as much as possible and as early on as possible so that you can start to build the seeds of those relationships that, that you need to be able to, to you know, find your, your community um, uh, uh, of, 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 of friends. And, uh, and that's why, you know, again, getting involved as much as possible, getting particularly with athletics, but, you know, there are you know, tons and tons of other, you know, social, um, uh, you know, clubs and in, in, special interest clubs and so on and so forth that you can get yourself involved in. Um, but getting, doing that early on is, I think, really, really important because for folks who, you know, kind of don't put in the effort early on to find that and I kind of get into the semester and they're focused on academics, it has the potential to be a, kind of an isolating uh, experience. Um, and so, you know, we, when, you know, again, you'll, I, I, it doesn't, it, you know, it happens to a minority of folks who end up going to, to St. Andrews. Um, but there are some for whom they end up again, uh, uh, feeling a little bit isolated. Um, so again, I just urge you, and, and what, what do you, do you guys have anything that you'd want to say along those, along those lines, as far as like tips for really making the most of St. Andrews? Um, you can also join as a social member to any of the sports society clubs. Um, so like my friend on polo, she took lessons, but she didn't really compete in like the real competitions, but she had her lesson really isolating because she wasn't really getting people other than the two people in her lesson hour that week, which was different every week, but the socials every week, she got to know the whole team became really good friends. Um, but for any of the sports you could join as just a social member, which meant you were just, you still had to pay, but you got invited every week to their socials and you could build a network of people that way too. So even if you didn't want to play the sport, but you had an interest in it or your friends were playing it and you wanted to go to the same socials they were going to, you could do that. Yeah, there's also a, um, a fair in the student union, kind of like the co-curricular extravaganza at Holy Cross that happens in the beginning of the, sem- of the first semester. Um, where all of the clubs and societies and things like that set up a table. So I would definitely recommend going to that. It's just give your email to a bunch of things. It's so easy to get involved in. Nothing is like, no one's really asking that, that much of you, you know, it's, it's not like signing up for a sports, like an actual sports team at Holy Cross. It's not like joining a very intensive club. It's really just like meeting cool people, being able to get the invite to the socials if you want to go to them, things like that. And you can also go to any of the sports for the first, they call it like a give it a go. Mm -hmm. So I was going to play lacrosse there because I played lacrosse my whole life and I went to the give it a go and I liked it. And I went to practices for the first like week or two. And then I was on one of the higher teams and it was just too much commitment that I didn't want to do. And I wanted to do golf lessons and I wanted to spend more time and I was friends with my flatmates. So I didn't need the social aspect of being with the lacrosse girls all the time, but it's still like, made some friends that I would see around town and I didn't 
do the team or go to the socials, but I would see them out and have people to say hi to. I, I'm really glad that you brought those two things up, the, um, the, uh, the sort of the, the, the involvement fair in the beginning and then, and then the, the give it a go week is a perfect example of like how they try to structure things. Like they front load a lot of that, uh, of that stuff at St. Andrews to where it's like, again, really encouraging you to as early as possible get yourself involved. And so what I recommend doing is exactly what Lucy did, which is to sign up for a whole bunch of stuff, go to the first couple of things and figure out the things that you're most drawn to and then sort of drop away from the stuff that, that you know, isn't, doesn't feel like it's going to be the best fit. Um, and that's really the, the ideal way to, to take advantage. Um, in the interest of time, I think we should probably keep going. Uh, just a couple other fun things from around town. Lots of food, you can get anything you want. So many restaurants, so many deals that are kind of pushed towards students. Like Matzo is a pizza place. And if you went before six o'clock, you could get any pizza for six pounds. Um, so like that first few weeks, a lot of this stuff is advertised. So I guess pay attention to the deals and then you'll save money because you'll do Matzo every week or <laughs> stuff like that. And Fisher and Donaldson does have the best fudge deal. <laughs> Oh, this place up here? <laughs> <Nice>. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were like hit or miss because I had friends that hated them, but it's kind of <laughs> like a Boston cream donut, but with like a caramel kind of topping rather than chocolate. <laughs> Cottage Kitchen was a little cafe that I loved, went there all the time. And then... There's so, so many pubs in town. <laughs> Even if you're not in any of the social scenes um, or clubs that do socials, you have to do a pub crawl at least once because like even in Boston and stuff, there's bars everywhere, but these pubs are all within two minutes of each other. And it's so easy to just try a different one every week or go to a bunch of them in one night. My favorites have the stars. Um, my friends went to Molly Malone's, Aikman's, and The Rule most weekends. Yeah. Cool. And friends. Lots of people. <laughs> very, very cool. All right. So thank you so much for the, to Lucy for putting this, uh, putting that together. I, I think it gives us a really awesome uh, uh, view into what the student experience is like there. So let's bring us back to my, uh, by comparison, super dry and boring presentation. <laughs> um, Let's talk uh, a little bit about um, academics. So in terms of uh, uh, eligibility for St. Andrews, it is one of our programs that has a, a, a higher cut point for, uh, for GPA to, to be admitted. Um, uh, they expect a 3.2 uh, or higher. Um, really just 3.2 is what you need to have a minimum of 3.2 to be able to, to get uh, admitted. Um, as I had said in the general info session and other info sessions, if you, through the, the, the course of this, um, uh, these several weeks of trying to figure out what program is best for you, you keep coming back to St. Andrews and you're, you know, close to that, that amount uh, or to, to that, that, that target, um, but not quite there, don't uh, avoid submitting an application to St. Andrews because you think that you're not eligible because of GPA. Um, reach out to me. Uh, you know, we can have conversations. Uh, they have the, the possibility of, of, of a requesting conditional admission. So like the idea being that like, again, you're, let's say like you're just shy of it um, at the end of this semester. Cause again, we use your grades based on the, you know, once we receive your, uh, your current uh, fall semester transcript, we use your cumulative GPA after that. So if, if those grades come in and like, you know, you're, you're, you're close, but not quite there and you're within reasonable reach of getting into the three, two range in the spring semester, then we've had many students, uh, you know, request conditional admission that end up being able to go to St. Andrews ultimately by bringing their grades up um, during the spring semester. So bottom line, let me be the one that, that you know, that determines your eligibility on the basis of GPA. Um, uh, I'll talk about, I have a slide that, that demonstrates sort of the, the course load. Um, that the, one of the challenges with some of our European institutions is that, um, you know, the short version of this is that you know you have to take whatever the local version of a full course load is and assuming that you've done that you then get a full course load of credits towards graduation and i'll show you the various ways that that can break down on the next slide um one of the things that uh you'll you'll encounter is that you know uh, you're going to be learning a bit of scottish english so things like course might mean something different uh in, in um in scottish english course is more like sort of major or course of study 
Um, whereas module is, uh, is, you know, what we consider a sort of class or course in, in American English. Um, what I want to show you real quick, and I'll, I'll drop the, uh, the link in the, uh, in the chat here, just so that you can begin the process of kind of exploring a bit. Um, this is what the, uh, the undergraduate course catalog looks like. This is where you are able to kind of get a sense of the, the types of courses that are offered in your discipline. So I will go ahead and pop this, as I said, into the chat. Good link to, to have on hand. Um, and so what I want to just uh, briefly draw your attention to are a couple of things. So like, again, you have the disciplines that, uh, that run here along the left-hand side. And then you have uh, these PDF documents that provide the, the list of the catalog. So let's say that you are, we'll go down to psychology as, a, as an example, right? Got a couple of psych majors on here. So psychology and neuroscience. So they break down each discipline into two sets of, of modules. So the 1000 and 2000 level correspond to basically first year and second year and psychology and neuroscience correspond to 3000 and 4000 levels. So Bottom line is that you're going to be like, you know, presumably taking a combination of major um, like courses towards your major and course, or, excuse me, modules, which we'll try to be consistent here, modules towards your major and then modules for, let's say, common area requirements. For common area requirements, those are likely going to be at the 1000 and 2000 level. And then for uh, uh, major uh, requirements and modules in the major requirements, those are usually going to be in the 3000 to 4000 level because you're going to be, you know, juniors as you're going abroad and needing to to usually take upper division courses towards your, um, towards your major. So, um, so yeah, so if you open one of, one of these, again, you have a listing of, you have a, the name of the, uh, this, the, the module, a description of the module, when it, it meets. Um, and then ultimately you'll see here the, the number of credits that are offered, right? So, um, and this is where a good segue into then uh, the next portion of this, which is, um, Oh, no, wrong one. Is that the credit value? So if you're thinking, okay, well, what does that 20 credits mean? I'm not sure what that means. So here is uh, my effort to, to try to explain the way that this works, right? So in this, the Scottish system, 15 credits is the equivalent of one Holy Cross credit towards graduation, right? So what you need in order to get a full course load of credits so four credits towards graduation is you need to make sure that per semester you are taking between 60 to 70 credits um, uh, in the local system um, but again as, as we'll see that the modules are weighted differently so the way that the total number of modules that you'll end up taking can vary semester to semester um, one way that it can work out and I, my sense is that this is actually pretty rare for it to work out like this just based on the the, the you know the standard weightings but one way that it can work out is that you have four 15 credit modules that gets you 60 credits and therefore you get four credits towards graduation. Right. And that, in that situation that, you know, mirrors the Holy cross system. Exactly. It's a four to four um, situation. Um, more common is a situation like this where there are a lot, particularly at the, um, for the, the, the first and second year courses, a lot of those modules end up being 20 credit modules. And so one way to organize that would be to do three 20 credit modules and that gets you 60 credits and therefore four credits towards graduation. Um, uh, often in certain disciplines, and I think uh, uh, English, a lot of in, in, in the humanities, uh, um, it ends up being the case that, you know, it's, I'm thinking uh, examples are English, history, um, for folks who are uh, in political science, you're gonna be looking at the international relations um, modules. Those typically in the upper division are 30 credit modules, which actually means that for, uh, in many cases, you end up doing just two modules that are weighted 30 credits each for 60 credits and you get four credits towards graduation. Um, alternatively, you could take, let's, like, let's say two 15 credit modules and then one 30 credit module and get 60 credits towards graduation. Um, this is, these are like the ideal scenarios, the way that it works out. If, if you are in a, 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 you know, certain majors where, um, where the credit system, you know, works out in, in, in a way where you get kind of an odd number, like either like, let's say 55, like, you know, is that you can't make it work in a way that you're, you know, it, it computes to like to get you the 60. The way that it works is you either just overload um, uh, one of the semesters um, uh, and just have, you know, 60 one semester and then 70 another semester, or you can get approval to say, do like 70 credits in the first semester and then a 50 credit, um, you know, under, under enroll for the second semester. 
the bottom line is you want to make sure that you're coming back to Holy Cross at the end of the academic year with 120 total credits. Um, this is a, a, you know, a, a super confusing thing, and I don't expect you to get this on the first go. My advice to you is to not be intimidated by this whole prospect and know that, to know that you know, we work it out for every student um, and, and to just you know, consult with me and I can show you how it'll break down on a case-by-case -case basis for, for your majors. Um, do you all have any guidance uh, based on your experience uh, navigating that, that, that sort of um, uh, equivalency situation? Um, I took two 30 credits my first semester, which were just upper level philosophies for my minor. And then second semester, I took three 20 credits, which was like concentration, common credit, um, those sorts of classes. And it was a nice balance. They were definitely completely different workloads. The first semester with the 30 credit kind of felt like the classes we take at Holy Cross. Um, they were smaller classes because it's upper level courses. So you're with kids that are actually studying that rather than general ed classes where it could be 200 students which is what a lot of the 20 credit modules usually were. Um, but you still have tutorials. So they are just very different types of classes. That's a good opportunity to, to briefly explain it. So if you've attended any of the other info sessions that I've hosted for around our university programs, or even in the general info session, one of the things that I, I said is a kind of a, a general uh, rule for our university programs is that particularly for, as Lucy points out, courses in the, um, you know, the, the lower division. So, you know, what will ultimately, you know, common area uh, requirements for you all. Um, it's pretty typical in our university uh, programs to have uh, uh, the format of the class be a large, you know, lecture that can have as many as, you know, a couple hundred students that's paired with a discussion section um, for them. And then as you work your way up into the, the upper division courses, those tend to be small, a little bit smaller classes. Was that your experience, um, Grace? Yeah, that was my experience as well. Um, I am a psych major. So, those were a little different and truthfully yeah. getting into um, psych classes first semester was extremely difficult. I think um, out of the like 18 or 19 Holy Cross kids that went only like two were able to make it into psych classes. But by second semester, I was able to take four um, because they were split um, two classes in the first half of the semester and then two more in the second half of that same semester. Um, so although it was a little different and weird, I'm now in this semester, I'm actually done with my major because of the classes that I was able to take at St. Andrews. So it's still all worked out, but the psych department is a little funny over there, I will say. And to, so we, um, that, that strikes me generally as a, as a bit, um, I, I, and again, I'm, I'm sorry that, that you had to, you know, that you, you went through that, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh. That, <laughs> what I can say is what, what's, What's not anomalous in what you describe is that the registration process is uh, uh, is definitely different and, and can be a little bit less transparent than at than at Holy Cross, um, and so it requires definitely a lot of uh, preparation going into it. Um, and we are constantly working to try to improve the the advising process, like on our end, to then like get you make sure that you are as prepared as possible when you get there. And we've been doing some outreach directly with the academic departments um, uh, at St. Andrews to ensure that, that students are make, you know, getting themselves into the, to the proper modules. And so, um, so bottom line is, it, you know, if you're listening into this and you're like a psych major, like, well, that's it. No, 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 no. Yeah, it works, it works. <laughs> yeah, the way, to, the way to deal with that situation is to, is to, to over communicate. So if you're encountering those kinds of situations, that's why, you know, um, one of the advantages of going to Holy Cross is you have somebody like, like, like me that, you know, is a full time dedicated to, you know, troubleshooting these kinds of issues as well. So if you encounter things like that, then you have a, a wide sort of net of, of folks that you can reach out to, to try to, um, to work through some of those things. Uh, right, exactly. And really quick, like I, I obviously do say that just to be transparent and honest, but oh. obviously by, by the time I even finished at St. Andrews, like I was done with the major. I did love my psych classes and I also was not the only psych major who, um, went from Holy Cross to St. Andrews for the year. So yeah, yeah. it all works out. It was just a little funny in the beginning. No, and, and especially in the beginning when, you know, it, it, the, the transition to, from like, again, like the, the Holy Cross registration, like I have, I have, you know, silly slides that I do at pre-departure where I like show the difference between registration at, at Holy Cross and like in, in abroad and like, you know, registration at Holy Cross is like full contact sport. It like, it's just a crazy, like, you know, furious, but like it's all mapped out really far in advance. It's really clear how it works. Whereas at, you know, at, at places like St. Andrews, like you have to go to like physically like different places. It can feel kind of slower um, uh, in certain respects. It can feel 
in some ways less um, uh, like, like you have less um, agency in terms of like reaching out to like faculty and like getting in like one on one advising about the appropriate courses and so forth. Um, so bottom line is, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, you're doing everything we can to like on our end, prep you as much as possible, but, and then go into it with, I think with, with a lot of these things, you want to go into it with like your plan A's, your plan B's and knowing too, one of the advantages of going for the academic year. And I think Grace, you're a good case in point for that is that if it doesn't like the, the stars don't align like perfectly for the first semester, by the second semester, you have that opportunity to then, you know, uh, iron things out to be able to make it, make it work. Um, but yeah, you know, we like to be, you know, fully transparent about, uh, about the differences in registration. Um, so, uh, want to talk generally, again, we, we mentioned, you know, academics, uh, as I've said, uh, in the general info session, um, uh, the one, one of the most significant sort of, uh, sources of culture shock, I think for students going to our programs in English speaking countries usually ends up being academic culture shock in terms of adjusting to sort of a, a new, approach to, to, to the way that instruction is, is organized. Um, and it generally, as a general rule, the, the expectation is that you're going to be a lot more independent than you are at Holy Cross. Um, and, uh, and that your assessment will likely be, uh, you know, consist of much uh, fewer uh, uh, overall assignments than at Holy Cross. At Holy Cross, you have lots of small assignments like every week that are distributed over the course of the, of the, the, the semester. Whereas at, at places like St. Andrews, what's more typical is that you'll have, you know, one, maybe, you know, two uh, bigger assignments that, that account for your sort of your whole grade. It varies discipline to discipline, class to class, but as a, a general rule, you should go, go into it prepared to, to experience that type of, uh, of a setup. Um, and, uh, and so just to know, again, the expectation is that you're more independent, that you are sort of structuring your work for yourself. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and again, um, doing sort of independent um, research, you know, independent reading. And, uh, and again, just generally applying your Holy Cross work ethic. Um, and and you'll, be, you'll be in good shape. It'll be different. I think that it's one of the biggest like, uh, assets of, of studying at a university setting overseas is that you get this like fundamentally different um, type of experience that again is you know typical of what higher ed looks like across you know uh, across the world. So you you know it's it, I think it's a really sort of uh, useful intellectual uh, development um, opportunity. Um, but I want to give yeah Grace and and, uh, and Lucy a chance to share their experiences of, you know to managing that uh, and navigating that that difference. It was definitely a lot different from what I was used to at Holy Cross, especially first semester I was taking two upper levels so I was in classes with fellow third year students and it was so so independent like I had class twice a week and then I had five days to just do work and do whatever and it was a lot of reading and no like intermediate work so I had like two papers for the entire semester and it was a midterm for like 30 percent and a final for like 70 percent and the professors were definitely like although office hours are much Can you say that once more? You, you, you America, cut out. I think because I would go to office hours. Um, uh, office hours. Uh, can you, you say uh, the professors were more and then, uh, yeah. And, and, they were very good with office hours and they were welcoming. Um, I felt like it was my Scottish friends that were like, oh, you're going to office hours because it's not as big of a thing over there. Whereas at Holy Cross, like I go to office hours before every exam. Um, so the professors were still very willing to help. And I did fine in all of my classes. Um, but the grading is definitely very different also because in America, you kind of expect that if you're going to study and put a lot of time in, you're going to get an A or a B. And over there, the grading system is very different. And it's a lot smaller percentage of students that will get like an A. And it's usually like more of a B average for Americans, I found. But it was all manageable. Yeah, basically the same thing. Um, I had class Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning from about 9 to 11. And that was it. Um, and the majority of my classes didn't even take attendance and you could go if you wanted to. And then we had a final at the end of the semester. Um, so very, very different from Holy Cross and having constant tests or assessments or homework due. It was really nothing like that whatsoever. Um, 
but it was good. It was it was something to adjust to for sure. But frankly, it's it's easier to adjust into doing less work than it is on the comeback. So like right now at Holy Cross, I'm like, oh my gosh, like there's so much work involved right now. And like with so many assignments do, like it is so crazy how it builds up. But walking into a system where they're not asking less of you, but there are fewer constant assessments. Um, it's a transition, but I don't think it's um, overly difficult. And one of the things that we like to emphasize along those lines too, is that, you know, this idea too, that, you know, the, the, when you, when you go out into, you know, into, you know, the real world as it were into grad school or something along those lines, you know, the, the expectation when you're in those contexts is that you're going to be like, you're not going to be given homework assignments in the same ways that you are at Holy Cross. Like you're not going to be told like read such and such that you're going to be expected. Like this is the, the broader task that you, you know, have to, to complete. And, and you're going to be expected to figure out how to organize your time in a way to be able to, to achieve the objectives of, you know, whatever grad course you're taking or whatever research, you know, assignment you're given, whatever work assignment you're given. Um, and so, you know, and the idea there is that like, you know, the absence of somebody telling you what to do doesn't mean that it's less rigorous. It means that the onus is on you to, to do the work necessary to meet the goals of the semester of, of the, of the, you know, of the, of the module. And, and so, you know, the, the danger is that sometimes folks will, Again, conf <laughs> nice. I'm so hello, hello. We have another another ambassador has joined us. Uh, the danger there is that uh, is that uh, some folks tend to again conflate like stress and rigor, and so they'll be like, "Oh, sweet, I you know I technically don't have to go to class. No one's taking attendance, so I'm not gonna, right?" And then I'll just sort of cram at the end and then like and at least hopefully survive. If you apply that approach, you're, there are two things that are gonna happen. Like one. Uh, you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot as far as like missing out on like, you know, the, the, the crux of the reason to go on this program, which is to, to, to have access to an incredible academic experience. Um, and then two, uh, students can get themselves into trouble when, you know, when you sort of like uh, put things off and you're like, ah, well, I'll, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll study or I'll do all this, this reading later on. And they end up like getting like insanely overwhelmed at the end when they're preparing for whatever that final you know paper is or final exam um and so on and so forth so if you can again uh, it's, uh, structure things in a way to where like you are being you know sort of consistent about like all right during this time of day this is when i'm doing like my reading and and again it set things up to where like you put make your own sort of schedule i think that you'll, you'll find that that approach will get basically just you'll get a lot more out of the the educational experience than you will if you just sort of put things off to the end and then you know do a hail mary to try to yeah, that's all of your your finals and so forth. I mean, I don't know if that that fits with your experiences. Yeah, no, absolutely. If you, although I I did say so much about how you know, like they don't take attendance. You only have one assessment. If you don't um, if you don't keep up, and if you kind of allow yourself to lean into the fact that no one is holding you accountable and that no one's like going to check up on you constantly, the end of the semester will really not be pretty. <laughs> So, and I think that I had one, during my semester, I had four classes because I was taking a bunch of just common requirements and things like that. And there was one class that I did allow myself to kind of slack off in. I didn't have to go, I didn't have to do anything. And by the end of the semester, it's just ultimately not worth it. And like Chris, exactly what you were saying, like it's so, it's honestly a very fun and a cool experience to be able to have, you know, to be able to say and have the experience of taking a class in a different country and what that structure is like. So don't don't study abroad and then not study abroad you know um so that's all i would really say on that i don't know if lucy feels the same yeah i agree with all that another quick thing that i remembered was if you're in the intro classes with first year students um at st andrews first and second year students your grades don't count so your grades only start counting towards graduation your third year so you need to pass your classes but it doesn't matter how well you do so it can be a little bit harder because you have to push yourself because your grade does count for Holy Cross where the kids around you may not be trying as hard because they're just trying to pass. So don't forget if like the kids aren't going to class because they may be just trying to get the C that you don't want to see. And also too, uh, along those lines as well, sometimes, you know, um, students in the, 
like local students will sort of give an air of like that they it doesn't really matter and that they're not really you know sort of trying hard and so forth but then you know uh it end up actually because they've spent like a lifetime of being like acculturated to this like model of learning do you end up doing a lot of the independent work that is sort of not like uh, you know uh, plainly sort of visible like from the surface and so that's you know just another thing to, to kind of uh consider as well for it may, it may seem like they're not that they're not working but they're in many cases they they they, they end up they end up being, you know, doing a lot of, of work that you're not aware of. Um, what was I going to say here? So, oh, uh, as far as, and I'd mentioned this before. Um, so uh, you are absolutely able to fulfill major, minor and concentration requirements uh, abroad um, uh, to those need to be approved by the, uh, your respective major, minor and concentration advisors. Common error requirements are ultimately approved by the other uh, registrar. Um, um, in the interest of time, I want to make sure that we, we continue on. We already talked about housing, so I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to uh, say much more on this. Um, finances, we talked about a little bit already, but just to reiterate, there's no sort of application fee, additional fee to study abroad. Submitting an application doesn't cost any, you know, any money. It's not binding. Um, if, uh, if you do end up studying abroad um, during the terms that you're overseas, um, you'll be billed Holy Cross room and tuition. Um, and then again, as I mentioned earlier, your board fees, the amount that you're charged for food will depend on whether or not you have a meal plan. If you have a meal plan, you'll be charged full board. If you don't have a meal plan, you won't be charged any board fees, but you'll have used that savings to then um, pay for groceries. Um, let's see, we already mentioned the activity fees. So again, just make sure you get yourself involved, hold on to your receipts and then, uh, and then send me uh, those you know, uh, activity fee re you know, uh, receipts and we'll get you reimbursed. So you know, join join, you know, an athletic club or, uh, you know, social club of the various kinds and, you know, we'll, we'll get you, we'll get you reimbursed. Um, let's see, I'm going to talk about student fees, uh, visa fees in a uh, second. Students, are, you're responsible for any fees associated with your visa. Um, students, uh, so uh, you're responsible for purchasing your tickets up front and then also arranging your transportation from the, the airport to, um, to the host institution. So that's, um, so, what we do for, um, for all of our students uh, abroad is that, um, again, you're responsible for purchasing your travel upfront, but then what we do is we put a, a credit in your account that's equal to the cost of an average round trip ticket from Boston to wherever your program location happens to be. So you pay, again, the cost of a ticket upfront, but then you get the cost of a ticket back in the way of a sort of a discount on your tuition for the term that you're going abroad. Um, as I mentioned, every program that we have uh, 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 overseas is, is different. And so, you know, the, we urge you to sort of resist the temptation. Like, oh, my friends over in, you know, Dublin had, you know, such and such amenity, you know, over here they had this and this and this. They, they vary because the structure of those programs is different. The, the different kinds of, um, the histories of those programs are different. So they, and, and the infrastructure is different in terms of what they, you know, the, what is available. So um, just to know that, you know, you should be choosing your program based on like the core, you know, the, um, uh, aspects of the the context, the institution that are you know um, that you value, and and less on like the sort of the minor details like you know free printing or laundry or you know gym use for example things along those lines. Um, and to know that again, though you may have access to those things for free at Holy Cross, depending on the program um, overseas, you know you may not have access to free printing, free laundry or gym use. Um, uh, let's see, um, visas. So those of you listening in, if you're interested in studying abroad in the UK. Um, uh, I'd full disclosure, you have, uh, expensive taste. Uh, unfortunately the, the UK, uh, the visa for that, we, if you're going to spend over six months in the UK, you need a, a tier four visa. Um, this is kind of an extensive visa application process. I do everything I can to, to guide you through and give you, uh, you know, sort of step-by-step -step instructions for completing that process. But, um, the visa fee is, uh, 348 pounds. Uh, and, uh, and there's also what they call an immigration health surcharge of uh, around 300 pounds that comes out to a total of around 800 to $850 in the US, in, uh, US dollars. Um, this ultimately grants you access to the local national health service um, uh, so that, that UK citizens receive. So, the, um, uh, so again, that, that can complete access to that system. Um, uh, and, but again, that's some, so as you're planning um, things out, just to know that that's something that you will, that, that is uh, uh, the, the most significant out-of-pocket expense that you can, that you'll encounter is, is that one. And we don't reimburse for, um, uh, let's see here. Um, 
ignore that. You know, we can talk on a case, but if you're not a U.S. citizen, just chat with me and we can we can talk through the details of your um, uh, of how best to go about um, the visa application process. Um, but again, not to worry. That's something that we, we again we give you tons of guidance through every step of the way. Um, in terms of the application process itself, it's really straightforward. Uh, it's at sa.holycross.edu, and um, uh, it's a you know simple uh, portal. You know, enter some sort of uh, basic sort of demographic background information. Um, uh, uh, the most sort of substantive part of that application is a personal statement of two to three pages, where you basically are having a conversation with uh, with me um, about you know why St. Andrews, um, how you see, like, why, what is it that motivates you to study abroad at St. Andrews? And, and why do you think that, um, that St. Andrews is a good fit for you in, in, in connection with like your personal goals, um, sort of academic goals, and maybe even professional goals. Um, so I urge you to really focus your attention less on sort of like autobiographical, like I took such and such classes, I, like I volunteered and did all this cool stuff. And therefore, like, I'm like, you know, worthy as like an applicant and more like, link your like choice of program to like your goals and around academics and, 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 and study abroad in, in general. Like what is it about St. Andrews specifically that, um, that makes you feel like it's the right program for you? Um, and, uh, and then the only other significant piece is uh, that you'll need to request a letter of recommendation. Um, uh, again, uh, I say this in all my sessions, uh, please make sure that you reach out to your uh, uh, professors in advance. Uh, of entering their names in the uh, recommendation portal in the online system, because once you enter their names in or the system, it auto generates an email um, requesting that that letter of recommendation. So make sure that again, you, you do the right thing and, and uh, be respectful, uh, reach out to them in advance uh, and ask uh, if they would be willing to, to write that letter for you. Um, and then uh, I'm not sure if the system is still requiring because we now have access to your transcripts in STAR, but ultimately if, if you're asked to, to upload a transcript, just download a, a, a copy of your unofficial transcript from, from STAR and then upload it to the system. Um, passports, if you do not currently have a valid passport, and by valid I mean it does not um, uh, uh, expire before January 2023, you need to make sure to renew it ASAP. Uh, as in like, you should look like today and see what, when your passport expires and make sure that um, if you need to renew it, that you submit it now. Um, because there have been um, uh, delays. I mean, there's th the, the uh, we're still, the U.S. is still processing uh, visa, I'm sorry, passport app uh, applications and renewals, but, um, but owing to, to COVID-19, it's, it's definitely um, uh, slower turnaround than usual. Uh, you don't need to have a valid passport at the time of submitting your application but you'll need it pretty soon uh, after that uh, as we begin, you know, visa processes in the spring semester. So um, that uh, brings us to the conclusion of the sort of um, the, the formal part of the presentation. What I, I would like to do now is offer Grace and Lucy each a chance to kind of like, you know, give like one last sort of pitch for St. Andrews in terms of like why they think it's a, you know, a good, um, a good program to consider. And then we'll open up the floor to sort of questions in general um, uh, uh, for folks that are, that are listening in. Sure. I mean, I can start. Um, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> um, I absolutely love St. Andrews and I would recommend it really to anyone. I think that it's a beautiful town, beautiful part of the world amazing place to study. Um, you have access to so much and also to all of Europe, although I would really recommend um, staying in St. Andrews and really exploring the town because there's, there's, it really offers so much. And um, even by doing the St. Andrews program, I've been able to meet and get closer with so many other Holy Cross students that now I can't imagine being at Holy Cross without. So I just think in broad in general is a great opportunity. So yeah. Yeah, you get friends with like Holy Cross kids. Um, so I have new friends coming back to Holy Cross, but I also have a whole network of kids that are full-time students at St. Andrews. And I call one of them every week and I rotate who I'm gonna call and I get excited. Um, I'm already planning to go back in June or July if it's safe. And it's just super beautiful. So many cool people and lots of cool stuff to experience. 